Okay, we are reviewing for the final, and we started the other day with problem six. So now we're going back to the problems one through five. I was asked about problem five A. My first thought on this is get the clump alone. There's a lot of themes on this. Get the clump alone. This one is the clump. And if I'm going to get that alone, how should I start? Help me. A little class participation would be good here. Getting that alone, so what? Divide by 36. And 36 and 36 cancel. And this one reduces. 4 goes in here once over 9. So 1 9. Okay. Now I notice that those bases are kind of close to each other. I bet you could make them both into 3 to the something. Okay. So I'd make this into 3 to the negative 1. That's what 1 third is. And I'd make this base right here into 3 to the what? Not 2, 3 to the 2 would give you 9, so it's close. 3 to the negative 2 would give you 9, and then 1 over that. One nine. All right. Then this, this had an x over 5 still. Now that I've got the bases the same, I hope this is easy from here. That times that, that's easy equal that. And then multiply both sides by 5 to clear the fraction. Easy from there. Okay. Any others you'd like to see some help with? Anything on 1 through 5? Probably 1 through 5. Yes, sir. Yep. On G, these two guys get combined together. And unfortunately, this just kind of wrapped around this. Oh, you wanted G, not E. Sorry. Okay, G. G is this one, and I, my first thought is X is in a weird place. How do I get rid of that 1.05? Anytime X is in a weird place, rewrite it. So this is a rewrite, and it doesn't have a log right now, so make it a log. Log base 1.05 of equals x. This, there, back to there. That's the classic rewrite. Now, x is alone, so that's good. I've got it as long as I had simplified enough. Now, since this has a base of 1.05, do you really think we can write 3 as a 1.05 for something? Uh, no. So, that'd be pretty As long as you get x alone, you have to solve. And that a lot of times involves rewrites, either into a log or if it is a log, you rewrite it without the log. All right. Any other ones you want help on? on one through five. Okay. Lots of crickets on that one. So let's move on to problem six we did the other day. Uh, maybe we just look at the end of number uh, of that section. So we did problems six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I think we started number 14, maybe even did 14A. I'd like to look at 14B. All right, it says solve for x in the given interval. What does this mean? That means, you know where pi is? I hope you do. That's where pi is. You know where pi over 2 is? That's where pi over 2 is. And it's saying that you should go between pi and pi over 2. I hope you get that means we can't be here, here, or here. It wants it only between pi and pi over 2. Okay, then, what is it really asking me for? Cotangent. I don't know how to do cotangent. So, you flip it. How do you flip it? You go 1 over this, 1 over that. What is 1 over cotangent? And 1 over, and it's negative, square root of 3. Are we in a spot where tangent is negative? I hope so. All students take calc. So, yep, that's a spot where tangent is negative. Tangent is positive here, here, so it couldn't have possibly been there. All right, so tangent's negative there, so it can, I can make a triangle in here, and my triangle side tangent is so uh, opposite, negative 1, or no. It doesn't have to be negative right there. Opposite has to be 1, but it could be negative root 3, and it is. Adjacent is root 3, and that one's the one that's negative. I don't like the picture. 
And then the last thing is, I gotta figure out that other side. Or do I? I really don't need to. I just need to know how big that angle is. Because that's what X is. That's X is an angle. So, how big an angle is that? Well, right here, this little angle is the one across from the one, and that's the 30 degree angle, but that's the reference angle. Remember how that's the reference angle? 30 degrees would actually be over here. The answer is not obviously over there. So this angle answer for this right here is not 30, but 150. Another way to say it is, if you had said 30, your answer is coming up in this quadrant, which where we can't be. We have to stay between pi and pi over two. Okay, so it has to be this little angle, and that angle is the 30, it's the reference angle. The actual angle then is this one, so I would say it's either 150, or you could say 5 pi over 6. Yes, sir. Uh, if it doesn't specify and you do both, I can't really mark the wrong for that. But if you would have said decrease here, I would have argued that the directions right here are telling you to use radians. Because they reference the radians there, they're, you're implying radians are better. Okay, any other questions about that one? All right, so when it says tangent is less than zero, you should be drawing the picture. All students take calc. Tangent is less than zero means tangent's negative. Can't be there and can't be there. And you should know that your two triangles are either here or here, but sine is positive, which means there's going to be only one of those two places. Sine's positive in this quadrant, so therefore it can't be there. And that narrows it down, and then you have to figure out what the third side of the triangle is, etc. Yes, ma'am. Okay, to start with the red ones, it was because tangent was less than zero. Do you get that that means I can't be here because everything's positive there and tangent has been, if tangent's going to be negative, like it said, can't be there. If tangent's going to be negative, it can't be here either because tangent is positive there. That's why those two got crossed off. The other one got crossed off because sine is positive. See, there's no negatives on that. So since sine is positive, that means sine's only positive right there. Of the two places I have left, that's the only place it can be. So now I know it has to be there. But then I can do my little sides. Sine is opposite, hypotenuse, this other side must be square root of something, and I go 5 squared minus 3 squared, 25 minus 9, which would be 15, square root of 15, I think. And now, uh, they wanted to know what's the secant of that angle. 25 minus 9, you were right, it's square root of 16. Oh, and it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, I should know. That square root of 16 is 4, and I should have known that that was a 4 because it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Thank you. It is negative 4 because of where our position is on the triangle, or on the uh, axis. And so now, find secant. You either have to have Cho Sha Kao, Cho Sha Kao memorized, which is not the greatest method because it's got two C's in it, the Cho and the Kao. But I personally go back to the secant is kind of a sister function of which one? Cosine. And so I'd find cosine and then just flip it if I want secant. So I'm going to go in this triangle and find cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is negative 4 over hypotenuse is 5. And then I would flip it to get secant. Because cosine of the angle would have been this. So then I flip it and I get secant. And then secant would be 5 over negative 4. All right, that had a whole bunch of little trig in there. The first part was just figuring out where things were positive and negative from A, S, C, C. All things take out. Once we knew where the triangle was, we had to find the third side of the triangle. Then we had to know uh, how to change from secant to something we did know, which was cosine. And then when we found the cosine of that within that angle, or a cosine of that angle in that triangle, we had to then flip it to get secant. All right. Yes, ma'am. Sure. It says it's between 90 and 180. So as soon as that happens, I'm guessing you know where 90 and 180 are. Do you? Do you feel confident on that part? Okay. So if I draw myself a little picture for that. Which one are we doing here? We've got lost. 16? 
Okay. All right, so here's my picture, and here's 90. Here's 180, also known as 3 pi over 2. Anyway, so it's got to be between there and there. All right, and between 90 and 180 is like this. Otherwise, we're doing crazy talk where it's like going this way, but then going back that way, and then that, that would be on inverse and stuff. But, all right, anyway, between 90 and 180. Okay, you're right. That's 90 and 270. Sorry. Okay. I better delete that. So, I wish I could fix that part of the recording, but I can't. Here's 90. Here's 180. 180 is 65. There we go. So, it's the same as last time. It's from here to here. So, that rules out everything else. So, this set is between 90 and 180. Okay, so now I know where to draw the triangle. And then from there, I'm hoping you can label your sides. And you'll have to find out the third side in a right triangle, square root of. And then once you found the third side, you can find sine of that angle. It'll be one side over another side. Okay. I think it's doable from there. At least you know where to draw a triangle. I think you can do it. Find the third side of the triangle, you can do that. It's not super hard for me. If you want to ask individual questions after that, you can. I'm going to move on. Moving on to. I don't want to just do all these problems, but I will look at it, number 17A because it's got a theme in this whole section. And it is, if you can factor it, you should. And then once you factored it, you, you'll find out most of these are quadratic, or many of them are quadratic. All right, so 17A, factor it. All right, between 90 and 180. You know what? I bet you that you two got fooled just like I did. Because are you saying they put the answer down here? Okay. Yeah, it does. Uh, that's all students take calc. That is a place where cosine is neg or is negative. So that that logically could have been right, except since it says between 90 and 180, it has to be in here. So can't read it. You're right. Thank you. If you remind me later, I'll send an email about that. But yes. Okay. So we're going to number 17. 17, you're going to have uh, factoring. If you can factor, you should. It's really a good rule. It comes up so much. There's the cosine in both of them. Factor it out right now. That's not moving. You done with this one already? Okay. So tell me what it is. Of x equals. Or sorry times by 2 sine what? There you go. Good. Okay, that's factored right. So now, once it's factored, you got two parts. This part has to equal 0, or that part has to equal 0. Alright, so then cosine equals 0. That's like a basic trig problem. So how do I do it? Well, I have to draw a triangle. Wait a minute, I can't draw a triangle. So zero over one, that's not the size of a triangle. So then it must be a quadrantal. You have to ask yourself, on the quadrantal kind, is cosine more like x or y? Cosine is like x. What's like y? Sine y. Nope. Sine's y, cosine's x. So cosine's x. Then what we're asking is, where is a situation where x equals zero? Because that's where cosine would be zero. If x so is this the spot where x is 0? No, that's the x-axis. So that would be where x is 1. Is this the spot where x is 0? Yes. That's the spot where x is 0? Is this the spot where x is 0? Yeah, because that's on the y-axis. There we go. Those two spots, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So there's two answers for this part, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Now that's kind of a warning sign to me. Like I, when I see those two, I think, oh, I wonder if they're going to throw tangent into that problem. You know why? Because then we'd have to throw out these two answers because tangent crashes at those spots. But there's no tangent in this problem. So then you go on to this part and you say two sine x minus one equals zero. Two sine x equals one. Sine x equals a half. And I had you memorize that since day one. You should know how many degrees that is. That's what is it? 30. Good. 
you hadn't memorized it, you'd have to go to your triangles, find one that has sides of 1 and 2, 1, 2, square root of 3, the sine is across from that, what's across from the 1, the 30, so that's why it's 30. Okay, but sine can be 1 half in two spots, there and there. And we don't have any rule that says we can't use uh, angles that are bigger than 90 or something, so we should get both answers. This answer is 30, that answer is 150. If you want them in radians, you probably be using pi over 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6 per second. Okay, I'm back. So, that was, if you can factor it, you should. This one, it's the same thing. If you can factor it, you should. But you can't until you set it equal to zero. Then you will be able to factor it tan out. Just like the other one. Except it's got a sign squared in it. Let's deal with that by, by showing you how to handle a sign squared on part Okay, on part C, I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. And now I have sine squared is equal to 1 half. How do I get rid of a squared? A square root. But if I do the square root on both sides, that's a sine. We've done it like nine times on tests now. If you square root both sides, you need a plus and minus. So sine of x is equal to plus and minus. And the square root of 1 half, is that really common? Yes, it is. Because the top is the square root of 1. 1 over square root of 2, and you've got a triangle that's got sides with 1 square root of 2 in it. So you go, oh, that's got to be that 45, 45, 90 triangle. It's a 1, 1 square root of 2. Okay. So, number 18 is a lot like 17. You're going to, it does say one other thing that's a little more scary, though. Find all solutions. Remember what you do on those? Probably aren't even going to be super hard problems. They're a lot like the other ones. Just you got to remember when you find all solutions, there's no limit like this where we only go between 0 and 2 pi. We have to find all our answers. So once you find a couple answers, let's say the answers come out to pi and 3 pi over 2 or something. But you take them and say plus 2 pi n. Because that shows that you know that these are going to keep repeating every 2 pi. Because the cosine function starts here and just keeps going and going and going. And so if you want to know, like, an answer that's here, it's going to keep hitting over and over and over. You're going to have, like, tons of answers for that. All right. I get what you're saying. You're going to have to... Um, Okay. Uh, well, I don't think you have. I think you do have to have four. Um, yeah, you have to have. One of them is sine x equals one half, or one over square root of two, which gives you two answers. You're right. It'd be four answers. The other one, sine x equals negative one over root two. So it's where sine is positive for this one, and it's where sine is negative for that one. So you're right. You draw the little picture. Sine is positive here and here. Sine is negative in the other spots, so you'll need four triangles. All right. This one is the first time where we run into one where they have different functions. One's cosine and one's sine. And you want to factor it uh, or do like some kind of quadratic with it, but you can't. So that's the moment where you need to start using trig identity. I'm going to review them with you. There's only one trig identity that we've ever written out that has cosine squared in it. Can anybody name the little statement? Nope, that's cotangent. Only one that has cosine in it. What is it? Uh, nope. That's, that's sine of two theta. And those aren't squared. But I'm going to give you some help. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. That's the only one of those identities that you know that has the word cosine in it. So therefore, what is cosine then? Well, you rearrange it. You put the sine over to the other side, which means it has to turn negative sine squared. And you will have cosine squared is what? 1 minus sine squared. So right here, Instead of this cosine squared, you put 
1 minus sine 6. So then I'm just multiplying it out. 3 sine x equals, I'm multiplying the 2 out, 2 minus 2 sine squared. Better use x so they keep it consistent. And now, any time you see a something squared and the same thing not squared, you know this is a quadratic setting up. And you could use the u substitution if you want and say let u equal sine x. And then I could say 3u equals 2 minus 2u squared. And then rearrange it, set it equal to 0, factor it, etc. But the key here was we needed to know a fact. This is one of many facts that I need to write out for you. I'm assuming you would like a list that you can use to memorize from for the test. All right, I will make that for you. It's going to take a while, but if I were you, I have a perfect place to copy it. On the front cover of your review packet, because in the center of the front cover of your review packet, it has all the ones that you will need, but you won't have to have memorized. We may as well put it on that same page, all the ones that you have to memorize, too. Okay, so on this page, if I were you, let's make a list. That, let's recopy that one. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. That's one of them. Now, there's something, there's somebody was reciting one about one with the coat. Can you finish that? One plus cotangent squared equals CSC squared. Good. That's the second of the Pythagorean identity. When would you ever use this? Picture the scene. You're taking your freak out final. And it says cotangent squared. There's not many places that you find cotangent squared in our big list. This is one of them. Cotangent squared. You could move this one to the other side and make the answer be cotangent squared is equal to cosecant minus 1. From there, do you remember cosecant? Oopsie. That can factor. Anytime you have something squared minus 1, think about how it can factor. Cosecant plus 1, cosecant minus 1. Okay, so anyway, that, that's where it can kind of lead to. But for right now, I'm just making you a big list, and that's the second in the list. Here's the third, the one with the, uh, who can finish this? Ten is what we, those are the three Pythagorean identity. I'm not going to try to reconstruct where they came from. I did when we first learned them, to the point where we're just trying to memorize them, rememorize them. So if they said, here's secant squared, you could replace it with this. What if they said, here's tangent squared in a problem, you could replace it with And if you have secant squared minus 1, then that can be factored. Remember, anytime you've got something squared minus 1, you're thinking that that can factor. You can get a lot. Okay, so that was our complete set of flat kinds. Here's another one coming at you. These are the odd even. Sine of some negative angle equals a negative sine of that angle cosine of a negative angle and tangent of a negative angle. Do you remember that this is the block where every single one of them has a negative except for in one spot? Do you remember that? And this is the one with this no negative on the cosine. The other ones have a negative. That's called the odd even. Okay, next, a quick note. See how cosine of 2 theta is listed three times? You can bet if we took the time to write that on your test for you, at some point on your test, it's going to say cosine of 2 theta. You're only, that actually means it's probably a fairly easy problem. Because all you'll need to do is pick one of these three things and stick it in where cosine of 2 theta was. And they give them to you on the front of the test. So you can expect that to happen. What's the one that's a lot like that, but we don't give it to you for free? We expect you to memorize it. 
sign of dragon skin closer. Sign of what? Okay. What was the one I just circled? Cosine of two theta. So what's the one you need to remember? Sine of two theta. All right, I'd write it right in the box if I were you. Sine of two theta is. Got it. Two sine cosine theta. Two sine theta cosine theta. All right. So copy this one down right here above the cosine of two theta. All right. The next one that you'll need to have memorized. And again, these are some easy points because we understand that you're going to have to have that memorized and therefore. The test isn't going to be as simple as sine of two theta equals, but if it says sine of two theta equals, and then like minus one, well then we just, it's not going to be super hard. We're just going to have you, once you regurgitate this fact for us, you put it into the problem. And from there, it won't be incredibly hard because we've asked you to have recall of a difficult fact. So that's, bottom line is, I'm, this whole section, this what we're doing right now, is really important because it'll get you lots of not necessarily easy points, but easy-ish points. All right, here's another set. Uh, sine of an angle is equal to, and now this, these are called the co-functions. What is the co-function of sine? Now you're thinking of the sister function. What's different? Cosine is the, is the co-function, good. But sine is not equal to cosine. They are not the same thing. But sine of an angle is the same as cosine of the, not really the opposite of that angle, but the angle that would add to it and add up to 90. So this is pi over 2 minus theta. What this means again, for example, would be sine of 30 degrees is the same as cosine of 90 minus 30, which would be 60. Get how that and that add up to 90. That's what's happening here. Is if for some reason your calculator broke and couldn't find any answers that are bigger than 45 degrees, and you needed to like say, okay, well, what's cosine of 60? It's the same as sine of 30. What's uh, tangent of 70? Cotangent of 90 minus 70 is 20. Anyway. This is a set called the co-function. Here's the rest of them. Sine uh, and cosine go together, of course. Uh, secant, and everybody gets this confused because they it's a cosine and cosecant. They get them mixed up. Um, cosecant, C-S-C. And again, it's always the opposite angle, not opposite. The, the complement is what it really is. Um, pi over 2 minus theta. And the last one is tangent, and that's cotangent. Those were the co-functions. All right, there's one more kind, and it's probably used more than any other kind. And that is the sine goes with its sister function. So it's one over because it's a flippant sister with what? Cosine. Flippant sister with secant. And tangent. <laughs> flippant sister with cotangent. And tangent's got two more add ons. Tangent can be sine <laughs> over cosine. Remember how sine is like y, cosine is like x? You see that y tangent is like y over x. Okay. And then the last one for tangent is to actually flip it. If tangent is sine over cosine, then logically cotangent should be a flip it. Cosine over sine. Can anybody think of any other identities that I haven't mentioned? Think 
have got some help. Later, but uh, I'm just going anyway. <laughs> All right, let's move on. You're back to the other uh, worksheet where we had to come up with a problem where we needed to know what cosine squared was. And again, they're not going to jump out at you and say, find the identity for this. You just have to know that, oh, well, on this problem, I could take cosine squared out. There's only one thing on that giant list he made me memorize. That goes with that. And I could say cosine would be the same as, move the sine over there, 1 minus sine squared. And then from there, again, you end up with a quadratic. You got something squared, something not squared. I do u substitution, factor it. That's kind of where we left off. All right. You get another 10 more minutes or so here. Uh, I'm trying to get in as much review as I can for the seniors here. Um, okay, this next little, uh, remember the all solutions was plus 2 pi n after it, after it. <laughs> Remember on like number four, or number 18a, you're going to have a square root. When you square root both sides, you'll need a plus and a minus. Anytime you see a square and think maybe I have a plus and a minus situation. Okay, on to number 19. If you're comparing this and this, this just happens to have a times by 3 and a plus 4 in it. Do you remember the high vo thing? Horizontal on the inside, which there's nothing going on in there with the x. So there's no high, there's no horizontal stuff. There's a whole lot of vo going on, vertical on the outside. That's a vertical stretch factor 3. That is a vertical move up. Four. You don't have to say vertically, you can say up, there's only one up. So up four and vertical stretch factor three. Now it says sketch the graph by hand. Alright, graph of G. That's this graph by hand. Well, I need to know what the parent is. This is the parent. Do you guys recognize that that's less than one and therefore it's decay? And if it's decay, it kind of looks like that. That's how decay looks. Now we got to make it stretch. Three times taller than it was. And the asymptote hasn't moved yet. And then up four. Now the asymptote's going to move. The asymptote was here. And we'd have to move everything up four. There. That's approximately, that's just a sketch. The red one is a sketch of this graph. It got stretched and moved up. And identify any asymptotes. Okay, well, the asymptote was on the x-axis, so that makes it y equals 0, but then it moved up. Now it's y equals 4. It's a horizontal line, right? So it's a y. Okay, there is a typical, like, these are just mostly about what were the changes. Like here, vertical stretch factor 2. This is on the inside. That's two inside fields. I'm going to rewrite it as negative 3x plus 3. And I'll say that's normally first, but we're on the inside. So this should be first. And it's a up. No, no. It's on the inside. So it's a left 3. And then this one is, it seems like it gets three times wider, but it actually gets three times narrower. Horizontal shrink factor one third. And the last thing is this little one. And that means a reflection, a left-right reflect. Also, since we're on the inside, it's horizontal on the inside. Horizontal reflection. Okay. So what's the order? Okay. We're on the inside. And so on the inside, we do opposite of normal order. Normal order would have been these two are kind of tied. It doesn't matter which one's first. But these two would have been first. And this would have been last. This one's first. In between these two, it's just their second and third. It doesn't matter which. But order is important. We've had that on, yeah, like six different tests. I can fetch you this is going to be an order question. What order should you do this problem in? Yes. Yeah. So that's the negative. No, wait, no. That, okay, and then when, are you asking when do I do the vertical stretch? Okay, once I'm done on the inside, 
you can move to the outside. Or, remember, since some of this test is multiple choice, you can start on the outside first if you want. Do everything on the outside first, and then go to the inside. I started on the inside, and you're right, I never mentioned the outside. The outside's that, and so then that's, it's only one thing on the outside. So there's no order issue, it's do that, which is a vertical stretch factor two. So if I were doing it, I'd say this is first, this is second or third. These two things are tied. And then the last thing, the fourth thing I would do is that. Which could have instead started with this one. Because you can start on the outside if you want. Okay. But one more topic I want to cover, and that is generally, again, I understand your shoes. You're going to be studying for this test. At some point, you're going to need to like power study between the last minute memorizing kind of thing. That front page, we just made a list of all of those uh, uh, identities. That's worth your time, like spend some time studying that. Here's another one, the graph study. Because graphing has your, been your happy place in the past. You want to remember what the graphs look like, because they are the easy problems from the past. But if you've forgotten what cosecant looks like, you'll have no choice of, no way to graph it. You know what I mean? It was easy when we did it, but that was two months ago. So try to keep with me here, and let's make a nice list of all the major kinds of graphs. That's what the next section is here. Uh, this, this one's about doing things in order. Uh, I should probably take a second on this. Go to 20 before I make you that list. Look at 20B. This is where the amplitude is. It asks for the amplitude. That's the amplitude. And if it's negative, amplitudes are never negative. It's a height. You can't have a negative height. Some people are short, but they can have a negative height. Okay? If the amplitude is the absolute value of that number. The next thing is, if you want the period, do you remember that whole formula? Period is 2 pi over b. Again, if you're making a list of things to memorize, that one's going to get used. I guarantee it. You know, that little equation, you have no hope on that problem. 2 pi over b. What is b? That's b. Three right there. So therefore, this one, the period would be two pi over b is two pi over three is its period. It doesn't end at two pi; it ends at two pi over three. Okay, this guy. Remember, I said absolute value of that. So what's the amplitude on a? Six. What's the period on a? What's the period formula? Pi over b, so therefore, 2 pi over 5. All right. It doesn't ask about phase shift. I'm hoping uh, that they keep them really simple on the test for phase shift. Like these next couple, just in case there's phase shift on the test. Phase shift is that part where you, you say, uh, look at this one, for example. That's been shifted. And is it left or right? Plus sign, so it's left. Is that correct? It's been shifted left. And how far was it shifted? Five pi over two, five over two pi. That's called a phase shift. They didn't ask about it, but just in case, it's on the test. All right, now. Oh, okay. What would be? There is no b, and therefore, what is b? One. And so you could do two pi over one, which is two pi. That means it's period hasn't changed from normal. What's the one thing that doesn't have a normal period? Actually, it's two pi. Everything else, everything else has period of 2 pi. What's the thing that doesn't have 2 pi? Tangent. Tangent has a pi here. Pi over pi for tangent. But they don't even have one in here, but I'm guessing that could be on the test too. Period is normally 2 pi over b. Except for tangent. All right. And now last but not least, last for today anyway, I'm going to give you a nice uh, list of sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, all the all the main parent graphs. Okay, I'm gonna get over here to a nice blank page. If I were you, I'd make just a little sketch of this. And if you have room on that front page, if you didn't already fill it in with all the uh, formulas, I'd put these on your front page and make yourself all the main graphs. Because if you're asked to do like you know, two sine of theta. Well, you got to know what sine is first, and then you can stretch it twice as high. All right. So anyway, here's sine's graph. Sine starts at zero, and it keeps uh, 
oscillating back and forth, and it goes to 2 pi, and this is pi, and this is half of that, pi over 2, and this is 3 pi over 2. All right, so the announcement's over with. Now, here is sine. How about cosine? Cosine is very similar. It's the same kind of a wave. It's just that it goes from 1, instead of starting at 0, starts at 1, and it makes like a valley. All right, so this one's cosine. And it ends again at 2 pi. Halfway, of course, it is pi. Half of that is pi over 2. And in between, 3 pi over 2. That's generally what cosine looks like. In a moment, we're going to go back and put in the sister functions on top of these. So we'll come back to them in a minute. I'll save you some space. That was cosine. The next one we'll do is tangent and cotangent. We're going to put them side by side. Here's, co here's tangent and here's cotangent. They are similar but different. And they're not just like shifted from each other. Not like sine and cosine. Tangent is the one that's got nice symmetry. It goes right through 0, 0, and uh, it's got asymptotes that are equal distances from here, and it's pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So, so that's a period of 1 pi. It's made up of a half a pi this way and a half a pi that way. Total of 1 pi. That's tangent. Cotangent. Down here, down here. And it's also got a period of pi, so if it starts at 0, this must be pi. Then. And cotangent goes the opposite way. Like that. Then this spot would be half wave pi over 2. Okay, that's tangent cotangent. Now we're going to go back, and there's only two functions left. We've done sine, cosine, tangent, and cotangent. The other two left are cosecant and secant. It's not hard if you remember that they just ride on the back of their parent function. For sine, it's sister function. I'll use this green marker here. And this dotted line is going to be cosecant. And it goes like that, and that, and it has asymptotes. And the last one is the one that rides on the back of cosine, and that I'll do in red here. This, that, and that, and that is secant. The dotted line is secant of theta, and it has asymptotes too. We just try to focus on the red one. The asymptotes is wherever cosine is zero. The asymptotes run in between the other dotted line. The asymptotes. The asymptotes are like the y-axis, so you're right, they're x equals thing. So the asymptotes here would be x equals pi over 2 and x equals 3 pi over 2. All right, so of course then if you take and stretch those parent functions, you like say 2 cosine of whatever, well then everything gets twice as tall. The same basic shape except up twice as high. All right. That's as much as we have time for, and seniors, good luck. I am available in the morning on Friday if you want to come in for extra help, and I will try to get seniors priority if you do come in because you only have that one day left. Uh, I'll be available for anybody, though, but seniors get priority tomorrow morning. Are we able to review old tests? Uh, you would need to tell me ahead of time if you wanted to see an old test because I store them in here. So if you tell me ahead of time, I want you to bring this test. Tell me that like now. Okay, that's all I got for you for today.